Uh, this example problem is awesome. And it's one that I really think illustrates the strength of cylindrical coordinates. OK, an airplane is flying in a straight line with a velocity of 200 miles per hour. Okay, So picture an airplane flying in a straight line with a velocity of 200 miles per hour and an acceleration of 3 miles per hour squared. So it's accelerating as it flies in a straight line. If the propeller has a diameter of 6 feet and is rotating at a constant angular rate of 120 radians per second, determine the magnitudes of velocity and acceleration of a particle located at the tip of the propeller. Is that cool or what? We have an airplane flying through space, and there's a particle on the end of the propeller, and we want to know the acceleration of that particle. Does it sound easy? It doesn't sound easy. But let's set it up with cylindrical coordinates. And this is how all of these problems are going to be from now on, is that the setup is the hard part. If you can spend, and don't get frustrated. The easiest thing to do is get frustrated and say, oh, well, I'm just going to write my equations and start equation shopping, and hopefully I get the right answer. That's the wrong way to approach these problems. The right way is to stop, think about the problems, and get your right setup, whether you use normal tangential, cylindrical, or rectangular. After that, the math just falls out. Because if you set up the jig properly, you can just keep cutting. So I'm going to draw an airplane, I hope. Okay, There's my propeller. And this is going at 200 miles per hour. It's accelerating at 3 miles per hour squared. And there's a particle on the end of this propeller spinning around. OK, so now I need to set up my coordinate system. I need to pick my origin and set up my three axes. And the way I do that is based on the information I've been given. Anybody have an idea where my origin might be? Center of the propeller. Why did you choose that? Very good, because the propeller is going in a circle, which makes you think of polar coordinates, right? Basically, we want a plane of polar that's traveling through space in the z direction. Doesn't that sound like the propeller? Okay, so I'm going to set my origin right in the center. My r vector is going to go out like this, and my ur is going to extend from there. My u theta is going to be counterclockwise from the horizontal, which, you know, horizontal would be this way. Counterclockwise would look like that. Clear. This would be u theta. Yes, going out towards the wing. Very good. And then my uz would be like this, moving forward. Notice I haven't written my givens yet. I'm kind of switching the order of things on you, because setting up the coordinate system is going to help you write your givens in a way that they can fit right into your equations. Now that I have that set up, I can go back and start writing my givens. One of my givens was that the plane is traveling at 200 miles per hour. I can now write that as the velocity in the z direction is equal to 200 miles per hour. And of course, we're going to convert that. That ends up being 293.3 feet. Okay. Then it tells us that it's accelerating at 3 miles per hour. I can now call that my acceleration, my tangential acceleration in the z direction. Well, I'm just going to write acceleration in the z because we're in straight line motion right now. That's going to be equal to 3 miles per hour squared, which is going to be equal to 0 0.0012 feet per second squared. Then we're given that the propeller it has a diameter of 6 feet. How would I write that one? r equals 3 feet. Very good. r, these are all givens, by the way, r equals 3 feet. I just, have an I just gave myself an equation for r, right? r is not changing. It's at 3 feet. So I just gave myself my equation for r, which means I can find dr dt. I can find second derivative of r with respect to t. And one more. It tells us that propeller has a diameter of 6 feet and is rotating at a constant angular rate of 120 radians per second. What am I going to put that down as? 120 radians per second d theta dt, d theta dt, 
equals 120 radians per second. Notice how writing my givens down in terms that make sense make the rest of the problem pretty much fall out. And this is what I call front-loading the problem. We're putting all the hardness just in the setup. And what are we supposed to find? I don't know. What are we supposed to find? Magnitudes of velocity and acceleration of the particle located on the tip of the propeller. In interest of time, let's just find acceleration of that particle. Well, now that I have this whole thing set up, I can say the acceleration is going to be equal to, and I just go with the equation that we already solved for. Of course, I have to reference the second derivative of r with respect to time minus r d theta dt squared in the ur direction plus r times the second derivative of theta with respect to time squared plus 2 dr dt d theta dt. That whole thing times u theta plus the second derivative of z with respect to time in the uz. OK, now I just always write things out in a very orderly fashion. So you could do something like this. r equals 3 feet dr dt equals what? Zero. Second derivative of r with respect to time equals zero as well. <laughs> really zero. And then I would start with theta. And I'd say theta, well, I'd say d theta dt equals 120 radians per second. What's the second derivative of theta with respect to time? Well, it said in the problem a constant rate of 120 feet per radians per second. So this is equal to 0. Okay. And I think I got it. OK, so now I can just start plugging things in. Sometimes it's nice to just go cancel out all those zeros, right? This one would be 0. Uh, d theta dt is not 0, so we'd keep that one there. Second derivative of theta is 0 dr dt is 0, so this one cancels out completely. Okay. Now we just plug things in. a is going to be equal to negative r, which is um, 3 feet, times d theta dt, which is 120 radians per second, squared, no, radians per second, sorry, whole thing squared, times ur plus 0 times u theta plus 0 0.0012 times uz. We go ahead and do that math. ur plus 0 0.0012 uz. Uh, feet per second squared. And then if we want the magnitude, it's the square root of the squares, which is negative 43,200 squared plus 0 0.0012 squared, which is basically 43,200. Look at the difference here. We got 43,200 feet per second squared because of the propeller rotating and only 0 0.0012 because of the plane accelerating forward.